about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we
I get so caught up in the middle Thinking of drowning in those blue eyes I'm losing sight cause I am falling I'm so deep down, deep down And it's not a lie That I die I can't hide Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another episode of Dadvice TV Live. Hey, if you're new, go ahead and say new down in the comments and introduce yourself so our community can get to know you. Now, for those of you that are new, let me tell you a little bit about myself real quick. Then we're going to jump right on into today's topic. My name is James. I'm not a doctor. I am not a dietitian. I'm just a regular person like you who was diagnosed with stage five kidney failure and told, hey, you need dialysis and you need a transplant. Well, that was almost two years ago. I never went on dialysis. I never got a transplant. Instead, I made diet and lifestyle changes while working with my healthcare team and the most important person of all my healthcare team, a renal dietitian. I learned how to eat more kidney friendly and reduce the burden I place on my kidneys. Now today, I don't have a single symptom and I'm now stage three. My kidneys, they're still shot. They're no better than they used to be, but I'm not overburdening them. So I feel great. I have tons of energy. Now, tonight we have our favorite regular renal dietitian, Jen Hernandez. Everybody say hello to Jen. Hey, Jen. Hey, everybody. So good to be here again and uh, really getting into the fall, getting to everything we've been talking about. And of course, I'm excited for tonight. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick little hello to anyone who's new onto the show or new onto watching me jump on the show. My mm -hmm. name is Jen and I am a renal dietitian. And I've been working with people with chronic kidney disease, anywhere from stage one to end stage kidney failure on dialysis for the majority of my dietetic career. In fact, when I was a dietitian earlier on, getting into kidney nutrition and learning about kidney health with nutrition, I was so passionate about it. I took a second dietitian exam to become board certified in real nutrition. And that is what I do now in my private practice. I help people with chronic kidney disease do everything they can with their nutrition and their lifestyle to prevent kidney failure and to keep their kidneys healthy and thriving and doing what they need to do so that you can keep doing what you need to do. So I do see people privately in the United States I also have a free Facebook group for anybody on Facebook, and that is the Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group. You can find us in there. You do need to request or apply to join, which I just require that you answer some questions to prove to me that you're a real human being and that you get in the group and you are with thousands of people that are focused on a plant-based diet to keep their kidneys healthy. And it is such a phenomenal group. Everybody is so supportive and it is such a great community. I jump in and do cooking demonstrations. I give talks every week about different kidney questions, topics that come up in the group, anything that I can do within my power to support you being an awesome kidney warrior. So that is something that is free for everybody. Yep, and make sure guys, the title, if you, if you haven't joined her Facebook group, right there it is, Plant Powered Kidneys. Doesn't cost you anything, you're just joining the group, filling out that questionnaire so she can let you in. It is a private group, so only other kidney patients are in there. And there is awesome support, recipes, videos, all sorts of great stuff. 
you owe it to yourself to go join there. And also, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click the subscribe button on YouTube for Dad Vice TV. We're getting close to that 100,000 subscribers, and I can't wait. Now, let's jump right on in to today's topic because it is so timely. We're going to be talking about Thanksgiving and pretty much getting together and eating my favorite hobby <laughs> besides being on here <laughs> making videos <laughs> so let's let's start right with the big big question here in the states thanksgiving is a traditionally a turkey dinner is turkey good for those on who have kidney issues well it's going to my answer will be broken down into the different groups of uh, ckd so first we'll look at early stage CKD. So if you have stages one, two, stage three of chronic kidney disease, it is potentially something that you can fit into your diet. Again, you guys know, I say this every time, everybody's different, everybody's diet is different. Plant-based doesn't mean completely vegan for everybody. So again, keep that in mind that everything's individualized. I do see people with earlier stages of chronic kidney disease having some more liberalization. So they may be able to have some turkey as part of their diet. Their kidneys have enough uh, filtration function left that can take care of that protein processing coming from that turkey. So for earlier stages, more or less, you get the green light. Check with your own doctor or your dietitian to make sure that it's for sure good for you. Now, for later stages, stage four and stage five, these are the stages that people typically get into with less function and therefore mm -hmm. less filtration capabilities, including some uh, protein boundaries or protein restrictions. We've talked about the low protein diet before. So think about that when it comes to, tur to turkey. Turkey is a high protein food. It is an animal protein. That is how we categorize it. So for those with late stage, I would say really, really, really be careful about it. I typically would not advise it at this point because it's so high in protein for mm -hmm. the serving that you would get. And it's about 21 grams of protein per three ounce serving, which is about the size of the palm of your hand. So that could be half a day's worth of protein for some yeah, people it's, it's or probably, more. Yeah, half, um, probably on the lowest end, maybe a third just in one mm -hmm. serving. Mm -hmm. Ooh, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's only one part of your plate. We're not even accounting for the other things that are on your dish that could also be contributing to your protein intake. So Or your other meals. Stage, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm not a fan of starving myself until Thanksgiving meal because that's just... That makes for a sad day and a really full <laughs> stomach at the end of the day too. Yeah. <laughs> but for late stage, I would definitely say to be super cautious and make sure that you uh, talk with your doctor and especially talk with your dietitian about it to see if it's gonna be okay for you to include it. Um, again, I am a little more conservative on that side. When I work with people who have stage four and stage five, our primary goal is to prevent kidney failure. And sometimes that comes with sacrificing something like turkey if it means that we can keep your kidneys functioning better, longer. So stage yep. four, stage five, I'm gonna be a little more cautious about that. Now, stage five on dialysis. So complete oh, kidney yeah. failure, kidney failure on dialysis below a GFR of 10 to 15, where you're already on dialysis. Now dialysis, part of the whole function is that it cleans your blood. And with that comes some proteins coming out from the blood. So very often, if anyone is watching us who's on dialysis, you probably hear all the time, eat more protein because yes. the concept that we've always thought, and when I was a dialysis dietitian, that was really drilled into my head to teach my patients was to get them to eat more protein. We know now that it's not that simple, but protein needs still are a little bit higher. So it's typically something that you'll actually be encouraged to eat if you're on dialysis, uh, but check with your dialysis dietitian, check with your nephrologist and see what's okay with you. On dialysis, chances are the doctor or the dietitian is gonna be totally fine with you having the turkey for dinner. Yep, and then when it comes to turkey, there's lots of different ways to prepare it. Is there a certain way that's better than another way? 
I really tend to go towards the traditional roast turkey. Now there's the skin versus the no skin, which the biggest difference there is going to be the fat, the saturated fat that comes from the turkey skin itself. But roasting is going to be one of the healthier options. And when I'm thinking about the other options, something that's become really popular and trendy in these past, oh, I don't know how many years, deep frying turkey, right? Especially like here in everybody, Ohio. Yeah. It's a thing. Okay, yeah, it's it's really, really popular. But you guys know, like deep frying foods in general, this is not something that stands out as a really healthy option. And the same case goes for the deep fried turkey. It's going to be much higher in fat, higher in sodium. And something that people don't tend to realize is that turkey is a source, a high source of potassium. And we usually think about potassium coming from fruits and vegetables, but turkey, a three ounce serving of turkey has over 200 milligrams of potassium. Ooh. So that qualifies as a high potassium food. Wow, I did not know that. Now we have a couple questions that are kind of related. Is Do you know if Cornish hens are a pretty equivalent to turkey? It's still a, a bird, a white meat bird? <laughs> Yeah, it's probably going to be close to equivalent. I can't say exactly. Um, I would definitely have to look that up, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was pretty on par with what turkey is. Again, it's a poultry. It's from that same category, that same family, the lean meat. So it wouldn't surprise me. Um, and it, we, if we look at serving size ounce to ounce, that's an important comparison too. Because yeah. if you're comparing these foods, you want to compare the same serving sizes to understand um, if it's a better or or worse option for you. So looking at the three ounces of Cornish hen or Cornish game hen, that would be something to look at. So make sure you're checking three ounces for that. Yeah. And Gary knows me. Hey, Gary. He said, hey, James, you're going to you're going to finally get that prime rib. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. It was last December, the last time I had that. Prime rib would definitely be a very bad choice for Thanksgiving, especially stage four and five. I yeah, will that not would be, be quite an that. overload. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, so it sounds like I, in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I can have a little bit of turkey, but it's kind of a little bit, and. Mm -hmm. I like to eat a little bit more, especially throughout the day. So what are some alternatives that might be a good choice for kidney patients to have instead of turkey? Or maybe they have a little less turkey and they have something else. Is there more main meal? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love thinking outside the box when it comes to what the main dish of the Thanksgiving meal can be. And really, I have to credit my brother and sister for this because my sister, my younger sister, ha well, one of my younger sisters, my youngest sister, there we go. She <laughs> has been vegetarian uh, for, oh my goodness. She's been a vegetarian for, I want to say 15 years now, um, mm -hmm. ever since she was a kid, very, very young. And then probably about five years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more, five or six years ago, um, she went completely vegan. So plant-based. And my brother also has been vegan for about that same amount of time. And Thanksgiving meals with a big family and having these different dietary preferences really opened us to trying out different things and looking mm -hmm. at different recipes. And I credit them both a lot for helping me open my eyes to alternatives because prior to uh, learning more about plant-based and, and everything, it was still, again, when I worked in dialysis, it was turkey for Thanksgiving. That's what we would, would talk to people about. Yeah. So now I'm looking at things like... There's the plant-based substitution. So tofurkey is mm -hmm. one of the most popular, I would say long-standing options for a plant-based alternative. What tofurkey is, if, if you guys aren't familiar, is basically a turkey roast that's made from tofu. And it's stuffed with rice and veggies and some other things, mm. um, but it's shaped like a turkey breast. And that one can be okay. It's still going to be equivalent in protein so if you're somebody that needs to limit your protein, something that is a tofu based option is not going to lower the protein content. The potassium side is still going to be running on um, the higher side compared to turkey because it has more plants in it. Um, so I believe it is like 800 milligrams or so of potassium. So that Ooh. one would be for somebody that wants to do plant based. I would say somebody who's on peritoneal dialysis, 
who mm -hmm. needs more protein and needs more potassium or somebody early CKD who can take on the protein and needs the more potassium also and has been told to eat more potassium. So that would be something for somebody in those groups. Uh, I, I am a little hesitant because it's a processed food. I'm yeah. a little hesitant about the sodium. As I, you know, you guys know anything that's processed, we have to keep an eye on the sodium. There's no phosphorus additives from what I've seen, which is good. Um, but that sodium is over 600 milligrams in a serving, which is much Ooh. higher than traditional what turkey would be. We're, ta we're not talking turkey with gravy. That's a different conversation. Oh, yeah. Gravy is just liquid sodium. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're just looking just at the turkey. But the tofurkey is pretty high in sodium. So... I, I like to bring this one up just because this is usually some, this is people's like go to for, mm -hmm. that's what right away what they start thinking of is for their plant based option. So, and we we've all turkey. heard of it, I think, may not have had it, yeah. but it's, it's, they've gotten the name out there a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's even a brand now. I mean, there's, there's the Tofurky brand that makes other types of tofu turkey products, uh -huh. but really what they were most known for a while back was that turkey roast. Yep. So, so what else? Let me see. So there's the corn roast. And I know you've oh. talked about that company that you like their I, meatless oh, options. They've got, oh my goodness, my favorite little, the spicy chicken patties. That's mm -hmm. what got me off of my cravings for chicken sandwiches from McDonald's. It helped me break fast food. A little bit of chopped That's up great. cabbage, toasted friendly bread. One of that little vegan A's, some vegan mayo on there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Tastes like a McChicken. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I did see that the corn brand, they've done uh, a roast as well for like a Thanksgiving or a holiday type of substitution. So theirs, like the Tofurky, is going to be, uh, it's actually a little bit lower in protein from what I recall, mm -hmm. the sodium is not as bad. That's something that I, I do like about the corn brand is that their sodium content is more, I would say, understandable. Uh, yeah, there's still quite a bit processed. there, but it's not yeah. crazy. Exactly, exactly. So there's there's other companies that I'm just like, okay, you're off your rocker if you think that people are going to benefit from having that much salt. But, uh, oh, the brand is corn, Q-U-O-R-N. So um, I will have a link for you guys to uh, look up more information about it. Um, but that one I think is a little bit better, lower in protein, still moderate in potassium. Um, I'll need to check, I'll need to check the exact. So we're looking at the four ounce serving of, of the corn roast and the four ounces has the 460 milligrams of sodium it oh that's what it was it doesn't list the potassium and that's what mm. i'm hesitant about looking at the ingredients there's nothing that's really in the quantities they have there's nothing that's really screaming it's going to be high in potassium to me but just not having that information because companies aren't required to include potassium information yep. yet but it's not there so it, it, it's hard to say what it is without actually getting the number. So I, I would just I be wish a I could. Well, cautious. I don't remember it for the, the roast, but I did uh -huh. reach out to them to find out for the patties. I can't remember what the number is, but that was a question that came up. Those chicken patties, what was it? And I can't remember. And I'm in a, sp a special situation where my, my diet is actually high potassium because for some reason I don't retain it, unlike the majority of people with kidney issues. So I can't well, remember a great if example. it's high or not. Yeah. I mean, that's a great example, though, that everybody, it's all these different factors. Everybody's different. We cannot assume that there's a kidney diet or a renal diet. Everybody's right. different. Okay. So the corn roast, I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the fence about. I like it because it's lower in protein, lower in sodium, but the potassium is the question. It's also in, in case you are wanting to be fully plant-based, no animal products whatsoever. Uh, just be aware that there are animal products. They use milk and eggs in mm. their roast. So it's not entirely vegan, but not everybody has to be entirely vegan with CKD to benefit from it. 
So I have people that do include animal proteins in their diet because it is something that's really important. And I'm not even talking about like, I really can't give up hamburger. I mean, there are people like that, but there's people mm -hmm. that really should not give up animal proteins. So everybody's different. My focus is plant-based as in the base of your diet includes plants. So yep. again, something like corn that has the animal products in it, not the end of the world. It still can be a factor and it's still lower protein. So it yep. still could be a great option for somebody uh, CKD four or five potentially, but we got to find out that potassium information. Maybe I can reach out to them too. Yep. We can tag team them and get it from them. Oh, they're, they're great. And everybody out there. Um, so Joyce asks, where do they sell it? Let me give you guys a tip. Go to their website, coupons. If they don't have active coupons, yeah. email their customer support. They will mail you. Darn it. I think I have a package here. Oh no, this is from Gorton's. <laughs> Some coupons from them. Feel free to ask a company for coupons. You'll be shocked oh, yeah. at how often they send you coupons for free samples. But Joyce asks, where do you get it here in the Cincinnati area? I see it at Walmart. I see it at Kroger. And I see it at Meyer. Pretty much every grocery store has it. It may just be in a special section where they mm -hmm. put the healthy food or the vegetarian food. And, and Kroger, it's usually or in diet. a special section. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen it also at Whole Foods. So I know there that they've it there too. Yeah, but their website does have a great um, um, find out where we are located kind of a thing. You can type in your zip code and it'll tell you the stores in your area. Yep. Very good. Okay. What are some other alternatives for turkey? Okay, so the other ones that I like getting into are the more plant-based options. So one that I think is really great and makes for a beautiful presentation is a stuffed squash. So squash, especially winter squash, so the squash like butternut squash, acorn squash, pumpkin, which is a squash, they're higher in potassium, right? But you can, for one, modify the serving size and two, modify um, what you include in that recipe. So something like a stuffed squash looks really, really pretty, has a beautiful presentation, is plant-based. It does have, like I said, more potassium, but it also has fiber. And fiber is excellent in helping yes. us go to the bathroom, which helps us get rid of extra potassium. So mm -hmm. that can be something that is, I wouldn't say that that's the only tool as far as lowering potassium, because there's definitely many others, but it's great to have a diet high in fiber. So I really, really like the idea of doing something. And I came across a really beautiful picture on, I think, Pinterest the other day of a Hasselback butternut squash. Have you heard of the Hasselback like, I potatoes? I have not. <laughs> okay. It's a... <laughs> Remember, it's I'm a, still new to eating plant-based. It used to just be a topping for a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Hasselback is a way that you would cut into the, um, basically the food. Because I've seen Hasselback. Okay, you know I don't know things. that because I'm bad at cutting. <laughs> Well, you would cut all these slices, like all the, not, not all the way through, but you would cut into it, like almost making pockets. So mm -hmm. I, I saw this beautiful picture of this butternut squash and they cut all the way down the way and they stuffed herbs into each of those little like slits that they cut. Oh, I so know. Yeah. And you kind of, you could kind of bend it then a little bit if you wanted to, and it yes. opens up a little. Oh, yes. I almost know. like I accordion. Never knew what it was called. Yep. Hasselbeck. <laughs> Yeah, so there's some really great stuffed squash recipes online, and I would just recommend that you look at the any kind of food blogger or anybody um, that includes the nutrition information and make sure that um, it makes sense too. We know that squash is high in potassium, so if you see a recipe of squash and it's like potassium 60 milligrams, like that's not that's not right. So make sure you just check their information and make sure that it logically makes sense to you. But something like that kind of squash, just so beautiful with some rice, like a rice pilaf with some pomegranate, nice color. Ooh, just, it would yeah. be so pretty. A really, really nice way to set up a plant-based main dish option. And I like all the color. To mm -hmm. me, that makes food exactly. look so much better when it's just not all brown and gray, having that yeah. color. Especially for the fall, it's a lot of oranges mm -hmm. and the squash are these different orange yellow colors. So it just kind of ties in so perfectly with yeah. the season too. 
So yeah, that's one of my go-tos. The other one that I really enjoy, uh, and this goes really year round, but I think for the holiday season, if you do something like a prime rib, if you wanted to have a plant-based alternative would be to do a roasted portobello mushroom. I still got to try those. Oh Oh my my goodness. If that could be a substitute for like a steak. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I'm not going to say, I'm I'm not going to tell you guys, it'll trick you and make you think you're eating steak Mm -hmm. because that's just not the case, but you can use the marinade. You can use a marinade that you would use on steaks and a munch, a munch, a mushroom, (laughs) a mushroom. I was, so I was going to say a mushroom is a sponge for Mm -hmm. that flavor. So whatever kind of marinade you make, that sponge is going to literally soak it up and it's so good. I'm gonna, okay, All you this to weekend, do. I'm going to try one of those mushrooms. I got to go tonight and get groceries. Okay. I'm going to get one. I'm going to go okay. on YouTube, figure out how to cook it. I'm going to try it. So next week, I can tell you I've tried it. And I'm going to, I love spices. Spices yeah. are the secret to, at least mm-hmm. to me, to eating plant based and loving it because you can change Absolutely. it up. Like we talked about last time about the ginger spices can make such a difference. It's so much variety. I'm going to try it this weekend. I totally agree. And I think (laughs) uh, if you are feeling like your plant-based food is too bland, it's the spices. That's what you got to focus on because Mm -hmm. that is really what makes all the difference. Um, But there's a really, um, I'll make sure that I include the information of a, a really easy way to do roasted mushrooms, but it really is you clean out the bottom. Uh So like the underside of the mushroom where all the gills are, you scrape those out with a spoon, you pull off the the stem and wipe it down. You never want to wash your mushrooms in water. Again, they're a sponge. You want to, you want to put it with a flavor. So don't soak them in water or anything like that because it's going to soak up the water. So just wipe them with a damp paper towel to clean them and then put them in whatever marinade in a bag with marinade in a shallow dish with marinade, let it sit for at least 15, 30 minutes, toss it around once or twice. And then you can roast it 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, flip halfway through, yep. or you can put it on the grill again, about 15, 20 minutes, flip halfway through. So good. Just serve it whole. You slice into it. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's so good. Really, really good. And Natalie says, she has a good recipe. She'll email me, james at oh, dadvicetv.com. Awesome. There's my email. Send it to me, Natalie. I'm going to try it this weekend. I need to expand and try more. I'm going to try it every week. I decided a few weeks ago with my wife, we're going to start making new stuff every week. And I'm still working through all the different pastas from Flavis. I bought one of everything. And I'm still working through all those. And I am loving making kidney friendly pasta meals but they're a bit yeah. high on carbs yeah. but i'm loving them gotta walk yeah, a bit extra good. there you go <laughs> so you've mentioned a lot of things that are kind of high on potassium so it sounds like mm-hmm. potassium something we got to be careful with at thanksgiving and when i think of thanksgiving you know there's always the main meal like the turkey mm-hmm. or one of these alternatives and then we've got potatoes and all sorts of great sides to try my mom's watching she knows my two favorite things scalloped potatoes okay that's just loaded with potassium but i can have it and um green beans with mushrooms the the little mushroom you know it's funny i never thought about it. i love that and it's got mushrooms in it i do eat mushrooms yeah you do <laughs> <laughs> i love that my mom is cook it all at home so it all tastes great but, yeah, but I mean, are there any high potassium sides we got to keep an eye out on? Yeah, there are. There's definitely, I mean, like you said, right away, potatoes. And I don't know about you, but I remember growing up, there was not one potato recipe. There oh, exactly. was like three potato recipes. Yeah. Roasted potatoes, over. mashed potatoes, scallop potatoes. Sweet potato pie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. Yep. Yep. Or sweet potato casserole, depending on where you are. Yeah. It it is all over the place. And that's when you think about, I think I've probably used this term with you guys before, but you know, what should go, what should take up your plate real estate? That's Mm -hmm. what I, 
that's what I use that term, your plate real estate, you only have so much space on your plate. So what is really worth it to you to put it on there? Potassium is going to be something that adds up really, really quickly if you don't pay attention to it. And potassium, too much potassium can be deadly. It can stop your heart. It can cause cardiac arrest if you have too much potassium. So that's why it is the number one concern because we're walking into this, this uh, meal that has so many high potassium dishes. So we have, we talked about the squashes, all of the different types of potatoes. There's even the pumpkin pie we've talked about. So yeah, so we, we have to be careful with these things. And I'm not saying that you can't have these. Again, these yep. main dishes that we talked about, they're gonna have potassium in them. So it's a matter of how much can you have, how much should you have when it comes to your potassium goals. The most tightest potassium restriction is typically with dialysis where they have very limited kidney function to remove the potassium. And that is something that dietitians all over the world on Wednesday and on Thursday for Thanksgiving are thinking about their patients eating too much potassium. I guarantee you, if you're on dialysis, your dietitian is thinking about you on Thanksgiving. So yep. it is something that we worry about is their potassium. So in that most strict potassium range, about 2000 milligrams for the entire day is what is typically recommended. It could be a little mm -hmm. bit higher. It could be 3000 milligrams, depending on your kidney function, your labs. Um, but that is the general guideline when it comes to dialysis and the most the most strict potassium limits. And this is not something where I, I don't recommend, again, starving yourself for the whole day and then sitting down to 2000 milligrams worth of potassium because that's a huge potassium <sighs> load for your body, for yeah. your kidneys to take in one sitting. So don't starve yourself and think that you can just gorge on more food later because that's not how our bodies work. Maybe a long, 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 long time ago when we had to work that way, but our yeah. bodies now are, we know that there's food literally around every corner in every cupboard for the most part. It's just, it's, it's all over the place. So do not starve yourself thinking that you can eat a lot more. If you want to have these things that are higher in potassium, just keep in mind the portion. I usually go for recommending a half a cup or less. And if you have a lot of foods available, then even a smaller portion could do. Cause sometimes it's just yeah. a matter of a couple Little of bites. This, and then that, we're like, that, that. Yeah, yeah, it feels good and it's plenty and it lets us try more things. So it's a great time to practice portion control in that sense of just a bite of everything to kind of just try it out and see how you feel. Chances are, if you do that, you're still gonna end up with a full plate. You're still gonna end up with a full belly. So you're not gonna be risking any of that just by doing smaller amounts. Yep. Now, what are some of the lower potassium foods that maybe we can scoop a little bit more of on our plate or try to have more, you know, servings of, you know, like, hey, I'm going to have mm -hmm. three of these things because they're low potassium, just one of this. Well, one of my favorite subs that's gotten a lot of trendy popularity would be mashed cauliflower or roasted oh, yes. cauliflower even. Cauliflower makes a great potato substitute. And it's it magic. is lower in potassium. Yeah. And you can make, my wife is always roasting cauliflower. We're making all sorts of stuff. We eat so much stuff with cauliflower. And it sometimes I'm like, I can't believe this is cauliflower. It's mm -hmm. a great substitute for mashed potatoes. Oh, I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I think it's really wonderful. And uh, roasted cauliflower to me is just it's so good. It's even something that I will get for my side at a restaurant. We went to Missouri this past weekend. We actually just got back today. And oh, that was something. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but uh, the roasted cauliflower at one of the restaurants we were at was so good. And it's really wonderful to see restaurants even that are embracing different variety of vegetables on their menu. So cauliflower is a really great option to sub in for at least some of the potatoes. You could even do like a hybrid, do a little bit of mashed potatoes and a little bit of mashed cauliflower. I know there's a texture different. It's not, there's not, it's not the same, right? Where I can never say it's exactly yeah. the same. It's but pretty it's a close. Yeah. And, and it's a replacement that's, that's a little bit better for your kidneys, for your heart, for your peace of mind, enjoying your meal. 
And I think that makes a big, big difference. Yeah. So that's one. Um, another one I love is green beans and uh, yeah. just doing some nice, um, fresh, crisp, sauteed green beans is so good. We talked about the color on the plate and I love, I love seeing some good sauteed garlicky green beans on my plate. Oh, yes. You could do oh. the green bean casserole. Um, I know Jess from the Kidney RD has a great recipe for the cream of mushroom soup that you yep. can use with the green beans. And it's a lower, uh, a more kidney friendly alternative. So you could make that and then include that in your green bean casserole to make it more kidney friendly. But there are some great recipes out there to help you do some swaps for some of your favorite recipes too. Yeah, I love green beans with garlic. And then I get the sliced up um, almonds, which give a little bit yes. of fiber. And you just add a little bit of those to it and use mm -hmm. some black pepper. Boom, I'm in heaven. And done oh. and easy, not cooking yes. all day. Yeah, that cabbage is another popular one with our family yes. um, oh yeah i love boiled cabbage oh well it's still with a little bit of crunch not super mm -hmm. um, um, not too soft flimsy yeah so yeah. like a little bit of crunch and then we usually have we do have the carrots always my mom's really good mm -hmm. at lots of color and lots of we we had the big Thanksgivings, like the TV shows you know with all yeah. the food and stuff <laughs> that's wonderful though now, a few people have asked, what about dressing? Because that pretty much comes with Thanksgiving. And, and we mentioned gravy is high in mm -hmm. sodium. What about dressing? It can be really high. So something that, um, something that people don't always realize is that bread is considered one of the highest sodium foods. It's actually counted as one of the salty six of the American Heart Association of the six highest salty foods. So making something like dressing or stuffing from bread, I mean, if you do the box mixes, that's going to be really high in salt too, because it's already preserved and that's its own thing. But when you're making it, if you're making it from scratch, using your own loaf of bread, choose a lower sodium bread to start with and use a lower sodium or no salt added broth or base. I've done videos uh, about doing homemade veggie broth before, anything like that where you can reduce the salt because that's gonna be the biggest issue there is the sodium. And I know people get really, people get really guarded sometimes about the salt. And it's like, well, it doesn't taste like anything. I mean, you can still at the table, you can add some salt to it. But if you're putting a lot of salt in the recipe, and then you're adding more salt onto your plate. Yeah. It, it just adds up so fast. And I want you to feel full. I don't want you to feel bloated. I don't want you to come away with swollen ankles. I don't want you to come away with high blood pressure. So I want you to be feeling good. I want you to step away from the table and really feel like from start to finish, you enjoyed your meal and you don't feel guilty. You don't feel sick. You don't feel like you need to go to the hospital. I want you to feel good with your Thanksgiving meal. And that's why in some of these cases, I put these more strict recommendations down because I just want you to feel good about it. I don't want you to regret your meal or your Thanksgiving, yep. or your holiday. Yep. And for those of you, know, the Flavis brand, I'm not trying to promote them, but they have a lot of kidney friendly bread options. Uh, you can put them in a blender. You bzz, 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 just hit yep. it. You all of a sudden you got breadcrumbs. They have a great bread mix and they have recipes for making like cornbread with actual corn and doing this low sodium kidney friendly. Um, those are great alternatives. So those of you that haven't, yeah. you know, looked at the Flavis products, I have a video uh, talking about it. Go watch that. Go to their website. Check the stuff out. The, there's perfect products there to help you yeah, make kidney-friendly alternatives for the holidays coming up. Mm -hmm. Now, what about, so we kind of talked a bit about, you know, veggies, potatoes, alternatives for turkey or just a little bit of turkey. Big thing, desserts. Are there some that are kind of okay? I mean, there's, there's going to be pumpkin pie and pumpkin's yeah. high in potassium. Right, right. <laughs> pumpkin's high in potassium. So again, keep that in mind when it comes to your whole plate and your balance. If you want to have a piece, there is even recipes and we've talked about pumpkin before. Think about, think outside the box besides plain, plain old pumpkin pie. Like 
pumpkin cheesecake or some kind of pumpkin tart, some kind of other dessert that includes the pumpkin flavor, but a little more diluted so that it doesn't have as much potassium in it. So a, a pumpkin is still good. It's still something you can have. You just want to be aware of how much of it is in there. And pumpkin pie is high in potassium, but yep. there are so many other pies that are low in potassium. So it, it's, you have, you probably have more dessert options than anything when it comes to a kidney Perfect. friendly Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we, you can do pecan pie or pecan, depending on where you're from. Oh, you can do cherry pecan. pie. Pecan is a P and a can. Pecan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I agree with you. I agree with you on this side here. I, I I'm pecan also. We actually we growing go. up, growing up, uh, there was a church right behind our house that had huge pecan trees and we would climb the fence and go, and they were very nice and they let us do this. Yep. Um, but we would we would pick pecans and even some of the trees were oh. actually hanging over. So we, they would drop into our yard we too. Had, and I remember we just had so many. We had giant, when we lived in Louisiana, trees everywhere. We would fill these giant cardboard boxes with them. Uh, my mom's a great cook. She grew up cooking for a big family. So she'd make all sorts of delicious pies. Oh, mm -hmm. so that, that is a good one. Uh, how yeah. about apple or my favorite for people who have challenges with gout? What about cherry pie? Oh yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Those fruit pies I think are a great option. If you can get one from scratch, I think mm -hmm. that's like icing on the pie. I don't know. Ice cream on the cake or ice cream on the pie. It, it is just so great oh. to get something that has the whole fruit because again, the fruit has the fiber. So that is really awesome. And berries are lower in potassium. Cherries are kind of moderate-ish, um, but this is a better choice compared to the other ones that are higher in potassium. So think about those fruit pies. If you want to top it with something, I would recommend something like a whipped, like a coconut whipped topping or something that um, if you, there's tons of like uh, non-dairy whip topping alternatives now that you could do. Uh, the ice cream is a bit heavy, really high in sugar. You're already having mm -hmm. sugar. So sugar on top of sugar is a lot of sugar. So be careful with yep. that. But it still makes for a really great way to end your holiday meal with a nice sweet treat. Yeah. And, and around here in Ohio, we have the pies. But my favorite Thanksgiving um, Christmas treat, and you may never have heard of this, my great grandmother pearl used to make it all the time my mom's watching she knows exactly what i'm gonna say potato candy what is that i've never heard of that yeah it's made you, you boil the potatoes you kind of flatten them with with sugar and you you know, on wax paper you put a layer of peanut butter you roll it into a log put it in the freezer let it kind of stiffen up slice it up oh it's heaven. You'll have to look it up. Potato candy. It is not for those that are diabetic or those that have to restrict potassium. But, oh, I used to love getting a giant tin full of it, homemade, and I would just sit there and eat that stuff. And, Mom, I know you're <laughs> watching. That's what I want this year. I want some potato candy. I, I love that stuff. I can have potassium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that is so cool. I've I've uh, never heard of that, but um, it's a big Ohio I'm, thing. A lot of it around here. That and the Buckeyes. Well, I'm kind of upset with my Ohio family now because they've never told me about that. <laughs> I've heard of. <laughs>